If you've ever seen a Marvel movie, you know that there's something after it's over, and video games can be no different. Here's the 10 craziest things that happened after the game ended. As a quick note, there are going to be spoilers in this video, so you have been alerted. You're on notice. If you go past this point, you're going to see spoilers. Number 10, Wheatley's Apology. After going completely mad with power, Wheatley decided to say sorry. And he didn't really say sorry to anybody because he's flown around in space, alone. And let's let's be honest, he kind of deserves that. But it's not like he accidentally like spilled a drink or something. Wheatley actively kind of tried to kill you. And basically just because he became powerful. Now, he wasn't exactly designed to be like an advanced system. So when he got all of the advanced systems and weaponry and all that, it just was too much for him. And he lost it. But you know what? It just, you, you, you can't apologize for the stuff that Wheatley did. It doesn't work that way. Also, he was on the moon, so it doesn't really matter that he was, he was just talking to nobody. Number nine, the Mile High Club in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Now, most Modern Warfare fans know that the end is not the end, and that there's more to do after the credits. Now, the mission itself is not necessarily related to the storyline. It's just a hostage situation on a double-decker aircraft, uh, but it's great. It's just another high-quality mission set in a completely abnormal setting for anything in Modern Warfare, and is engaging and difficult in a way that kind of exemplifies what Modern Warfare was to the Call of Duty franchise. A big, big jump. Speaking of a big jump, that's how it ends. Jumping out of the plane. Number eight in Assassin's Creed 2, the credits roll, and you think the game is over. But you wake up and realize that ain't true. As Desmond, you're gonna have to fight your way the hell out. And guess who's there? Oh yeah, the Templars. It's actually a really cool thing that happens and sort of throws you off guard, but at the same time, it's kind of not skippable. And for me, that's what makes it crazy. You kind of rejoice thinking, oh, I've got more game, I've got more story. This isn't, I don't have to leave this world yet. And then you're like, I kind of want to leave this world. But in all truth, finding out that the game isn't over and you have more to play, in my opinion, is a fun thing. And is a fairly creative way to actually get you to stick around for the credits. Number seven in Far Cry 4, depending on who you choose, different people are installed in order to preside over the future of the country. Throughout the game, you could side with one of two leaders, Sabal, who was essentially a religious extremist and authoritarian, or Amida, who wanted to run the country like a military and fund it with drugs. Really, whatever the ending was, it kind of wasn't nice. The point was kind of to split you down the middle on what you felt and make you realize that some places are just screwed no matter who's in charge because the two people everyone has to choose from are both bad. They're just different types of bad. Number six, Silent Hill 2, the dog ending. I don't know if you've ever seen the dog ending, but it is bewildering. The dog ending is a joke ending where you walk into a room and find that a dog has been sitting at a computer listening to music and has pretty much made everything happen. The dog is pulling levers, looking at graphs on screens, and it's absurd. It's completely absurd. Like, he gets down and the dog, like, licks him. Like, hi, guy that I just tortured. You survived a lot of things that could have killed you that I was in control of. And then it plays this goofy barking song. Now, it's obviously not canon because it's a joke ending and the Silent Hill games have joke endings. But that doesn't mean it isn't bizarre. Number five in Halo 3, when Master Chief turns out not to be dead. They kind of faked you out. They kind of baited you into thinking, oh, is the hero story over? And the entirety of Earth's population all thinks that the hero that saved them, he's gone. And it turns out he's alive. And you're like, I knew it. He has a little conversation with Cortana and you're like really satisfied because, I mean, you just did all that work. You didn't want to die. Number four, after the Lost World Jurassic Park, Jeff Goldblum delivers a message. First of congratulations and then assuring you that there are other things to do in life and encouraging you to go do them which I have to say, not the worst thing in the world. The message is delivered in typical humorous Jeff Goldblum fashion. It definitely does feel like a reward for completing the game. And then there's a little silly uh, dinosaur sound to which he runs away all scared. It's not something I expected when I played the game. And I did play that game. And I thought, you know what? It's really amazing what they can put on a compact disc. Number three, at the end of Metal Gear Solid, 
Revolver Ocelot is on the phone. It's not what you would call a personal phone call either. It's very business oriented. It implies there is more than meets the eye to the events that just unfolded and that Revolver Ocelot reports to somebody with a plan and that somebody is the President of the United States. Mr. President. That's right, Revolver Ocelot, one of the high-ranking terrorists, is working for the President. That really complicates everything. And over the next few games, Metal Gear Solid just completely descended into this complex, maddening plot that actually seems kind of simple in Metal Gear Solid. That was not the case in future titles. All the lines were blurred, and it started at Mr. President. Number two in Red Den Redemption, when you become John's son, Jack, and take your revenge for what happened to your father. I can pretty much just say that, because it's cool as shit. Something that I think that Rockstar got incredibly right with Red Dead Redemption is the story, and actually making you care about everything that happens in the game. In fact, I still think it's probably the best story that Rockstar Games has done. And the quote-unquote real end that is Jack Marston taking his revenge on his father's killer. And finally, number one in Mass Effect 3, the Stargazer telling the young child of the Shepherd. And you might be saying to yourself, how is that crazy? It tells you so much about what happened without saying anything. If you activated the Crucible, the Stargazer is voiced by Buzz Aldrin, who you know has been to the moon. And you find out for him the kind of legend that Shepard became after the events of Mass Effect, and exactly where humanity is without saying a darn thing about it. Things did, weren't recorded perfectly thanks to that war. And it's cool to think about how legend kind of compiles itself from being retold over and over. And as a quick bonus, at the end of 2002's Spider-Man, after Peter Parker kisses Mary Jane, he speaks directly to the player and says, looks like you're done here, go outside and play. Which is, you know, kind of like Jeff Goldblum or Tony Hawk, but it's Spider-Man. What's your favorite big crazy thing that happened after a video game's ending? Meet us in the comments and tell us, we're certainly interested in what you have to say. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do that. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week, and the best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.